So today, I want to start by going back. To be specific, about 2,000 years. Now, I want you to picture ancient Rome. What images come to your mind? The gladiators, Colosseum, Julius Caesar, or maybe armies wearing scale mail, perhaps a bit like this. Now, I want to change your focus to a modern-day oncology unit, specifically women who are undergoing radiotherapy breast cancer treatment. Can you see a connection? Now, there's nothing obvious, I can grant you that, but today I would like to talk to you about two of my major science projects, both of which were inspired by the past, scale mail and ancient Egyptian water clocks, to help solve two very different problems. I'm 16 years old and I love science and engineering, in case you hadn't guessed from the T-shirt. As a scientist, I am, along with so many others, constantly thinking about where we'll be in five years, in 10 years, even in 50 years' time. It's a question which constantly drives our curiosity and our imagination to help solve global problems with simple answers. Whether this be clean energy or health, there are major concerns facing our planet today. Now, not only is our generation going to inherit these problems, but we're also creating new ones for ourselves. But I believe that when it comes to coming up with solutions, we can look to the past, we can use the past to change the future, taking things that have been used before and repurposing them in a different way. Now, if you've ever gone to the dentist for an x-ray, you'll be familiar with this scene. The dentist comes into the room, they place a lead apron over the top of you whilst they quickly jump out and you get your x-ray. Well, this is a similar type shield that might be used if you're undergoing radiotherapy breast cancer treatment, but it isn't fail-safe. The lead that they use is toxic. It costs a lot of money and it costs a lot of time for the centres, which is why they tend to opt out of this decision. However, this means that the women who are undergoing this treatment will receive harmful, unwanted radiation to their contralateral breast, which is just a fancy word for the breast that's not being treated. And this is an unwanted byproduct of being free of cancer. Studies have shown that one in 14 women who undergo this treatment will develop a second primary cancer in this breast later in their lifetime, which is where my idea for scale mail comes in, something which I've learnt about in movies and museums. Could this ancient shielding technique be more effective than what we're using today? Now, some early forms of scale mail were documented by the Chinese who used them to protect their horses during battle. A Japanese samurai used to beat individual leaves, replicating that of fish scales. It was also found in Roman and Persian armies and is also found on this very cute animal called the pangolian, which is very effective for protection. So this is my device called the Smart Armour, which stands for Scale Mail Armour for Radiation Therapy. So I made this by meticulously and painfully interweaving these individual scales together using pliers and jump rings for what felt like an eternity. So to test my device, um, I used what would we would consider typical breast cancer treatment. And this was found that I could reduce doses to the contralateral breast by up to 80%, reducing the radiation levels to this breast by 80%. Now, what makes this device different, which you may have already noticed, is not only the use of scale mail, but it's also the use of copper. Now, I found that copper was 20% more effective at the skin level than lead, something that contradicts global standards that we should be using lead. Now, I've performed all of my testing at the Chris O'Brien Lifehouse, and I'm overwhelmed and absolutely ecstatic at the response. It has uh, approval from the Therapeutic Goods Administration of Australia, which means that it's ready for clinical use. I have a provisional patent on it, so don't go thinking you can steal it. And my paper is soon to be published in the Journal of Applied Medical Physics, which is based in North America. Now, there's still, of course, a lot of work to be done, but through experimentation, through curiosity, and a bit of a imagination, 
This just shows how an ancient technology can be refocused for future scientific breakthrough. The ancient, curving, conforming nature of this material made it ideal for its new purpose, potentially saving lives. Now, I'd like to change your focus a bit to a problem where I've also focused my thinking. Solar panels, which are expensive to buy, difficult to install, and thus become almost impractical when helping to solve the developing world's great energy crisis. Many millions of dollars and thousands of researchers across the world are looking to improve solar panels efficiency by one or two percent. I discovered that I could improve a solar panel's output by up to 72 percent through the combination of ancient technology and the modern solar panels. Now on a different note for a second, 71 percent of our world is covered in water. 96.5% of this is found in the oceans. Now, of all of this water that covers our planet, only 1% is able to be drunk. It ho only 1% holds the basic properties needed to make it consumable. Now, I want you guys to remember this because this becomes important a little bit later. But for centuries, humans have used water to scientifically aid our existence. In 1500 BC, the ancient Egyptians created the first clock, which was a water clock, where they used a water-dripping vessel, which was calibrated against the movements of the sun to tell the time. Now, interestingly enough, it was the most accurate time measurement until the 17th century, when the pendulum clock was invented. Water has also been used to further exemplify beauty and magnify what we know as beautiful and as nature. So my idea was to apply this ancient water dropping technique to solar panels in order to make a solar panel mechanically track the sun. It's called the solar system. Now this water drip system works by matching the water tanks on one side of the solar panel to the force and strength applied by a spring system on the other side. Now this means that I'm able to control the drip amount and slowly rotate the panel throughout the day, matching the path of the sun. The solar system could be an exciting tool for developing communities, as it's able to provide both water and power by filtering the water once it comes out of this water drip system. We can provide developing communities with a safe access a safe, reliable water source and power. A 72% increase in power output shows you how ancient technology can be refocused and how we can bring the past into the future. When Thomas Edison was asked, how did it feel to fail countless times, he replied, I didn't fail a thousand times. The light bulb was an invention with a thousand steps. Now, I know that I'm going to fail and I'm going to be disappointed constantly. But when this happens, it just means that you need to get up. It means that you need to try harder. And it means that you need to try something different. We need to start experimenting with a childlike curiosity and imagination, which can be inspired by the past. And don't let anyone tell you that your age matters. Don't let anyone tell you that your gender matters. Anyone can find simple solutions to global problems. The answers are out there. Someone just needs to go and rediscover them. Start by using the past to change the future. Thank you.